Hi everyone. So, in this video, I'm going to share with you one problem that came up in numerous software engineering interviews for companies such as Google, Amazon, Apple, and Twitter a while back. However, rather than just jumping straight to the solution, I'll try to slowly walk you through the solution and potentially how you might have came up with the solution yourself, or in other words, the intuition behind the solution. So here's the problem. Given n non-negative integers representing an elevation map where the width of each bar is 1, compute how much water is it able to trap after raining. Now, visualizing this problem can be a bit tricky, so I've tried to create an animation that would try to simplify the idea of the problem a bit. So let's have a look at that. In this case, we're given an elevation map of 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, and 1. As the rain intensifies, the water starts collecting between the buildings. The problem asks us to find the total volume of water that will be trapped once everything is said and done. For example, in this case, there are six units of water that are trapped in the elevation map. Notice, however, that the water in the first block can't increase higher than this level as any excess water would overflow from the left and just fall down on the ground. Similarly, if the water in the mid-level goes higher, then the water would overflow to the left, falling on the water in the first block, which would then overflow again and fall to the ground. In other words, the water level must reach a level of equilibrium. So the question is, how would we go about finding the volume when we're only given the elevation map? Take a minute and think how we can achieve this. Try to find the simplest way we can solve this, no matter the complexity of your algorithm. Remember again that Donald Knuth, a great mathematician and computer scientist, said that premature optimization is the root of all evil. So for now, just focus on finding a simple solution, one that works, and forget about big O notation and all that stuff. Now, at first, you might have a couple of ideas, such as looking at the longest two buildings and then finding the volume of water between them. However, you'll soon realize that this doesn't account for all the water trapped. For example, in this case, there is still some water to the right and the left of the longest two buildings. Now, approaching this problem as one big chunk is really hard, and if you spend enough time on the problem, you'll notice that you're wasting your time, and you aren't really going anywhere. At times like these, when you're doing problem solving, it's often convenient to stop, take a minute, and think about what you're doing. Reiterate to yourself what you're actually doing. So what are we doing? Well, we want to calculate the total volume of the water. But we already established that finding the total volume is hard. It, it's a hard thing to do, so after all, we've been struggling with it for a while. So, if we can't find the total volume, can we use a problem-solving strategy to break this volume of water into something smaller? Perhaps a strategy like divide and conquer? So, here's the thing. The water volume that we're looking for is mainly made up of several columns. Each building, or index, in the elevation map will have a certain amount of water on top of it. For example, the first index has zero water on top of it. The second index has one unit of water on top of it. If we can somehow sum this amount for every single index, then that translates into finding the total amount of water trapped for the entire elevation map. But still, how do we do that? How do we even approach that? Let's take one index as an example and try to see how we would go along finding the amount of water at that index. If we could do that, then we essentially have found a solution, right? So let's take the fifth index. You can see that the fifth index has 
two units of water on top of it. But how did we arrive into these two units of water? Take a minute and think why this index has two units of water and not three or four or even five. Make sure you think about this before restarting the video since it's a key component to the solution. Make sure you totally understand the reason for this answer. So if you spend enough time, I'm sure you'd see what the idea is. If the fifth index somehow stores three units of water, then the third unit would overflow to the left, to the fourth index, and that subsequently will overflow to the third index, which would overflow to the second, which will in turn fall to the ground. So in other words, at each index, the amount of water stored on it must be at equilibrium. But that also means that the index must be surrounded by two buildings from the left and right, at which the minimum building is at least its height. So, in this case, since the fifth index has a building of height 3 to its right and 2 to its left, then the total water stored at it should be the minimum of 2 and 3, which is, in this case, 2. This ensures that the water is at equilibrium and won't overflow to the right or left. Let's quickly take another example to show this. Let's take the ninth index. You'd notice that the longest building to its right is of height 2, and the longest building to its left is of height 3. The minimum of both is 2, and so the total length of index 9 should be 2. However, since there's a building at index 9 of height 1, then the total water stored there should be 1 unit to make the total height 2. That's great, but how does that really translate into code? So if we had to write some code, the code would look something like this. We would have a function, perhaps we can call it get total water volume, and it takes an argument, which is h, which is the elevation map, and we will first initialize the total water volume that we're calculating to zero, since we don't have any water so far, so we'll just initialize it to zero. Then, we will loop over all the elements from the first to the last, calculating the maximum building heights to the left and the right of the current index. Taking the minimum of these heights, this value is how long the building and water at the i-th index should be, to be at equilibrium. However, since the index has a building of height hi, we subtract that from that value and we're left with the total water trapped at the index i. We add this amount of water to the total amount of water trapped so far that we're calculating, and repeat this process for all the indices from the first one to the last one. In the end, the variable total water should have the total amount of water stored. This will be it for part one of the video. In the next video, we'll be discussing a more efficient solution to solve this problem as well as doing some runtime analysis on the complexity of the algorithms and so on. Thank you so much for watching the video. This is part one of the video. If you liked the video and would love to see part two, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Making these videos takes a huge amount of time, so I really appreciate all the support. Also, if you're feeling rather generous, I'll leave a link to my Patreon account in the description. So, I'll see you in the next video.